and welcome to Challenge Solutions. My name is Caitlin and in this video I will be sharing 10 tips for art teachers with blind or visually impaired students. These tips are primarily directed towards elementary and high school art teachers, but some may apply to college classes as well. Also, these tips will mostly apply to blind students with little to no residual vision. If you have a visually impaired student who still has quite a lot of usable vision, they will probably do art class differently. However, these tips can help if you have a totally blind student or a student with very little remaining vision. With that being said, let's get into the tips. Tip number one is maintain communication with both your blind student and their TVI. TVI stands for Teacher of the Visually Impaired. This is the person who's going to be responsible for modifying assignments for your blind student, converting things to braille, making tactile graphics, doing anything that is necessary to help your blind student be successful in their classes. You need to maintain communication with your student and their TVI and let them know what's coming up in the class so they can stay ahead of the game and make sure there's a plan in place for how your blind student is going to complete their assignments. All blind students are different. I can give you a generalized list of guidelines and tell you what works for me, but ultimately only your student and their TVI are going to be able to tell you what is best for that individual student. Tip number two is don't be afraid to let your blind student use normal art supplies. In the traditional elementary and high school art class, there's a lot of painting and a lot of drawing and a lot of coloring and a lot of work with supplies that at first glance seem like they wouldn't be very useful to blind students. You are partially right with that assumption. Your blind student isn't going to produce anything super brilliant with oil paints or watercolors or even colored pencils. They just can't. It's not doable if your blind student doesn't have much residual vision. However, it is still okay to let your blind student use these supplies even though they aren't producing anything brilliant with them or even recognizable with them. Using paints and colored pencils and watercolors and crayons is just part of childhood for most people. It is sort of an experience that everyone has, and it is good for your blind student to get that experience. It is good for them to experience the feeling of painting with a paintbrush and using watercolor and coloring with colored pencils and crayons. Even though they can't see the colors, they can't see the lines on the page, they're not going to be able to blend colors effectively or draw anything recognizable, it's good for them to have that experience because then they will have some context for what people mean when they talk about painting or drawing or coloring. Also, blind students can still find joy in drawing with colored pencils and painting with watercolors, even though it is very abstract and they can't actually see the end result. Now, if your blind student is bored by the activity and hates drawing and painting because they can't see the end result and they don't find joy in it and they don't understand why they're being asked to do it, maybe don't ask them to do it. Give them an alternative assignment. Find something that they can do and enjoy and let them do that instead while the class is painting landscapes. Also, it is perfectly fine to let your blind students use hot glue guns and X-Acto knives. I remember being in probably fourth or fifth grade, we were making sock puppets in my art class and my art teacher was absolutely terrified to hand me a hot glue gun. At that point, I had been using a hot glue gun independently for a while. I did a lot of crafts as a child, so I was very familiar with a hot glue gun and knew how to use it. It was perfectly fine to let me use that glue gun, but because I was blind, the art teacher was hesitant to let me do so, even though the rest of my sighted peers were doing it independently. Blind students are perfectly capable of using glue guns. Obviously, you want to teach them how to do it safely if they haven't already had that instruction like I did from a parent, but it's fine to let them use the glue guns. It's also okay to let your blind student use the sharp scissors and the X-Acto knives. I had an art teacher try to give me safety scissors once while the rest of the class was using the real sharp scissors, and I'd been using really sharp scissors for a while. I used to quilt, so I was used to cutting fabric with really sharp scissors. Again, you're going to want to teach some safety protocols and how to use the sharp scissors safely, but give your blind student the sharp scissors. Yes, they will probably burn themselves. Yes, they will probably cut themselves. Guess what? It's okay. It won't be the worst thing that ever happens to them. Sighted students burn and cut themselves all the time. It's just a part of life. It's a thing that happens. It won't break them just because they're blind. Tip number three, clay is your friend. Clay is a very hands-on thing. It can teach motor skills and your blind student can actually produce something good with clay. If you give them a physical model of something, they can probably produce an accurate representation of it using clay. I 
used to sculpt and make pottery a lot when I was younger, and I know a lot of blind people who are in professional sculpting classes and doing fantastic things with clay. You can use clay as an alternative assignment if you have a blind student who doesn't enjoy painting or drawing, or if you're doing something else that can't be easily modified. You can also give your whole art class an activity to do with clay, and your blind student can do what all the other students are doing. I worked with clay a lot in my art class. My art teacher had a bucket of clay in the room, and I was allowed to go get clay if I couldn't fully participate in whatever the rest of the class was doing, and I loved it. Also, we modified several assignments using clay. For instance, my art teacher had the class working with proportions to double the size of drawings, and obviously that's not going to work for me, so she gave me a chess piece and had me double the size of it using clay. You can also incorporate different techniques if you have your blind students working with clay. If your blind student makes a sculpture with clay, you can then have them paint the sculpture or put mosaics on the sculpture and give them a variety of experiences using that sculpting process. Now, your blind student probably isn't going to do a flawless paint job on their sculpture. You may have to help them touch it up in places, but that's okay. They can still have the experience of painting the sculpture that they made. Tip number four, make everything tactile. Most of the time, you can find a way to incorporate some kind of tactile hands-on element into whatever you're doing in an art class. For instance, you can create outlines for your blind student using a tactile drawing board or puff paint or wiki sticks or you can have your TVI emboss a picture and then your blind student can fill it in with paint or color pencil or crayon or any other media. Again, don't expect it to be flawless. They may not stay in the lines, but it's okay. They can still have the experience of filling in that tactile drawing with whatever medium they choose. You can find tactile drawing boards that are just a piece of screen inside a wooden frame. They're literally made of window screen or netting. My dad actually made me one when I was little with just a piece of window screen inside a wooden frame and you can place paper on it and draw on it and it will produce a tactile outline. Crayons work best on these because it produces the most prominent line. Pencils work too. Pens sort of work. You'll just have to experiment with different supplies and see what works best for your student but this will allow your blind student to draw their own things or trace things or color in things that you've drawn for them on that board. You can also use wiki sticks to outline things, or you can have your blind student create things with wiki sticks. You can use puff paint to create outlines, or give your blind student the puff paint and let them create their own tactile picture. Your TVI can also emboss things, so if you want to have raised line coloring sheets for your blind student, that is a possibility. There are also products made specifically for the blind, like quick draw paper, which is basically a spongy paper that puffs up when you color on it with water-based markers. You can buy a draftsman, which uses special paper and a special pen on a special board to raise whatever lines your blind student makes. There are many different options for creating tactile images for art classes. I will link some of the ones that I use most often in the description below. Tip number five, don't expect your blind student to fully understand how color works. I remember when when I was first entering into elementary school art classes, my art teacher asked my TVI how she was supposed to teach me the color wheel. The answer is you don't really teach your blind student the color wheel. I memorized the color wheel and the primary and contrasting colors and pass the test in the class, but it didn't really have much meaning to me and I'm not going to mix a perfect shade of purple. I have a basic understanding of color in terms of I know what colors look good together in an outfit. I associate certain things with certain colors. I know that red, blue, and yellow are primary colors and they can be mixed to create a whole bunch of different colors and I sort of understand how different colors work together on the page, but not really, not fully. It's okay that your blind student doesn't fully grasp color. It's okay if they don't memorize the whole color wheel for the purposes of passing the test. You should still explain the color wheel to them. Let them sit in on the class where you're explaining that. It is important for your blind student to have a basic understanding of how colors work together because color is kind of a necessary thing to understand if you want to blend into this sighted world. They need to have a general idea of what does and does not go together so they can dress appropriately, but 
they're never fully gonna understand it, probably, unless they have had vision previously and lost their vision later in life, and that's okay. If they create something that is the color of mud every time you give them paint, it's okay. They participated in the activity. Give them the participation points and move on. Tip number six, mosaics are good. Mosaic activities give your blind student an opportunity to create something tactile, and they can create something very beautiful with mosaic tiles. I used to do a lot of mosaic work. I would have a sighted person sort the tiles by color, and then I would memorize the order that the colors were in, and I would create patterns. I used to mosaic picture frames and jars and candle holders and all kinds of different things and they were really good. I sold my mosaic pieces for profit. I made good money making mosaic pieces. Not all blind students are going to take to mosaic work the way I did, but they can still create something nice using mosaic tiles and they'll probably enjoy the experience. Again, don't be afraid to give them the good mosaic glue. I used to use the really good high dollar mosaic glue that would glue everything together and I survived to tell the story of using that mosaic glue. So it's not going to be the end of the world if you give your blind student really good mosaic glue that will glue lots of things together. Teach them how to use it effectively. Maybe have them wear a smock and some rubber gloves for the first several experiences with it or all of the experiences with it just to protect their skin and clothes and definitely put some newspapers down to protect everything around them because they're gonna spill the really good mosaic glue. But it's okay to let them have that glue. It's also okay to let them work with with cement and make mosaic stepping stones if that's an activity you would like to do with your class or plaster, whatever you choose to use. Your blind student can still participate in that. They are probably going to need quite a bit of help for this activity. You may want to assist them yourself or have their TBI or a, another professional in the school help them or just a sighted friend of theirs help them, but they can participate in the activity. They can place the tiles in the plaster of their stepping stone. They can make their hand print in their stepping stone. They can glue the things and grout the things and produce a good end result if you teach them how to do it effectively, maybe sort the colors for them so they know what color tiles they are working with. Mosaic can be a lot of fun for blind students. Tip number seven, make your collage activities tactile. We did a lot of collage work in my high school art classes and it usually consisted of the side of students flipping through magazines and finding pictures that they liked and gluing them on cardboard and that wasn't super helpful for me. Yeah, I can chop up a magazine, but I'm probably not going to cut out anything relevant and even if other people cut out the pictures for me, I will inevitably glue them on upside down. However, you can modify this activity pretty easily. Let your blind student make a tactile collage or let your whole class make a tactile collage. It can be an alternative assignment or a group activity that everybody can enjoy. Give your blind student buttons. Let them cut out cardboard into different shapes. Let them work with lace and foam pieces and beads and all different kinds of things that can create texture. They may not produce an accurate representation of anything or a recognizable image, but they can still create different patterns and shapes and something that they like the texture of using these different components to make a tactile collage sheet. We also did an activity using this method in my high school class where we took cardboard and cut it out into different shapes and we made a design on another sheet of thicker cardboard. Then we put tin foil over it and I believe we went over it with India ink which produced a visually pleasing piece of artwork but it also gave me something tactile that I could feel of. You can get super creative with collage and make it hands-on and tactile in so many different ways. Tip number eight, your blind student can still participate in your sewing unit. I also used to quilt. I had to have some help with the patterns and things of that nature. My grandma would sort the patches by color and I would memorize what order they were in and put them together in that order. But I did all the stitching myself. Not all blind students are going to grow up with grandparents who teach them to sew like I did. Most blind students are not going to grow up with grandparents who teach them how to sew like I did. Most blind students are going to be totally new to a needle and thread when they get to your class. However, they can still use the needle and thread. We did an activity in my art 
class where we embroidered on paper squares with yarn and plastic needles. This can be a good activity for your blind student if you punch the holes in a design and give them yarn and a plastic needle, they can sew through the holes. If you want to work with a real needle and thread, you can teach them how to work with a real needle and thread. Maybe use something like painter's tape to make a line and have them sew along the line. That is how I used to quilt. My grandma would take painter's tape and put it in the pattern that I needed to be sewing to make the quilted pattern and I would sew around it. If they don't make a straight line, it's okay. If they stab themselves with the needle and bleed all over everything, it's okay. Sighted students are going to stab themselves with the needles too. Tip number nine, beadwork is an excellent activity for blind students. If you're teaching a younger class of elementary students, you can give your blind student bigger wooden beads with larger holes and some thicker string and have them string the beads. This teaches fine motor skills and it can be super beneficial for blind students for a number of reasons. If you've got an older blind student who is fairly good with their hands, then you can have them work with some nicer beads. Maybe give them some seed beads and have them string them on fishing line. You can give them different shapes to work with. You can find different colors of beads and make each color a different shape so your blind student can make a pattern using the shapes that will also be patterned using the color. You can do a lot of things with beads for your blind student. Again, this can be either an alternative assignment or it can be a group activity that your whole class does so your blind student can be included. Tip number 10, challenge your blind student just as you would any other student, but play to their strengths. Your blind student is perfectly capable of being successful in an art class. They may not be able to produce a brilliant landscape. They're not going to be the next Picasso in terms of painting, but they can still be successful in certain aspects of art. They can still express their creativity with different mediums. If you give them the opportunity to experiment with a wide variety of mediums, they will probably find something that they love and excel at. If your blind student finds something that they love and excel at, you should play to that strength and foster that love in them and help them get better and better at it. Don't just discount your blind student because they're blind. Don't just sit them down at the back of the room with a bucket of clay and let them work with clay for the entire semester. Yes, clay is good. Clay is awesome. I love clay, but you should also introduce them to different things, even things that they aren't necessarily going to be able to excel at so they can still have context for it, like painting and drawing, as I mentioned in the first tip. Give them a wide variety of experiences. Experience really is key for blind students. Blind students don't have the luxury of being able to look around them and experience things through sight, so it's super important that they get as many hands-on tactile experiences as possible. Even if it might seem like it's a waste of time or like it's never going to benefit them, it might benefit them someday, even if it just gives them context for something someone says that they would otherwise not understand because they've never seen it or experienced it before. Challenge them to explore different things and challenge them to get better and better at the things that they show potential for being really good at. They will thank you for not just letting them slide through the cracks because they're the blind student. So that concludes this video on tips for art teachers with blind or visually impaired students. If you are a blind or visually impaired student and you have a tip that I missed, please leave it in the comments below so that we can all learn from each other. If you're an art teacher and you have a question, please leave that in the comments below as well or send us an email via the contact form on challengesolutions.org. Please give this video a thumbs up so the YouTube algorithm continues to know we exist and subscribe to the Challenge Solutions blog, podcast, and YouTube channel for more content like this. Thank you for watching.